This week, Man United have forecasted they expect to deliver record-breaking revenues for the season just passed. But what in this press release has one expert now forecasting Man United will have breached the 23-24 profit and sustainability rules, unless one very specific set of costs can be excluded? Join us as we dive into the numbers. But there are worrying signs. As a listed company, Manchester United provide quarterly updates on their financial performance, and on the 10th of July, they posted their Q3 results for the 2023-24 season. The Red Devils delivered a total operating loss of 66.2 million in the third quarter of the year, and as a cumulative result for the year, that's 37 million in the red. Add in 52 million of interest costs, and that's 90 million lost in nine months. The big driver? 30 million of exceptional costs in relation to the sale of 27.7% of the group's voting rights to Trawlers Limited, an entity wholly owned by Sir Jim Ratcliffe. That's on top of 10 million spent the quarter before, meaning the Glazers have spent 40 million of club money to sell part of Manchester United. It was reported back in January the bulk of this went to Merchant Bank Rain Group, pocketing 25 million to facilitate the transaction. As we've seen, interest costs have also jumped in the first three quarters by 30 million compared to last year. But what do these results mean for Manchester United's profit and sustainability assessments? As we saw in our deep dive into the Red Devils' finances, United can only afford to lose 105 million over three years in PSR losses. Our estimate, United could only lose 18 million this year to get over the line. Our previous projection had United comfortably achieving this with 24 million of headroom. But Factoring in 30 million of interest and 40 million of exceptional costs, that would leave 46 million short. But what do others think? Stefan Borson, football finance expert and former advisor to Man City, has expressed similar concerns. Based on the club's own guidance, Man United will have breached 23-24 PSR unless the bulk of the exceptionals paid for the Glazer sale or a similar scale allowable are added back around 40 to 50 million short of 105 million with exceptionals included. Other experts such as Kieran Maguire from The Price of Football don't think it's an issue. I don't think things are that bad and PSR should be fine. United themselves did not seem to enter into the panic of the recently evolved PSR deadline day, in fact tying up a deal for Dan Ashworth to join the club. So are they in trouble? All of this is based on estimates, but one major question remains. Can Manchester United exclude the 40 million of exceptional costs they incurred for the sale to Sir Jim Ratcliffe? Removing that from the equation would suggest United are close to getting over the line. The Premier League handbook allows certain costs to be excluded for PSR purposes. Women's football, youth development, community development, also depreciation of tangible fixed assets. This is cash spent on stadium and other facilities. And they also include the amortisation or impairment of goodwill. These are costs that arise when one company acquires another. The costs we've talked about aren't accounted for as goodwill, but is there enough wiggle room to include these? We asked Kira Maguire this specific question. The answer? Possibly, with reference to payouts made by Chelsea following the Clear Lake takeover. However, these appear to have been made by parent company Blueco22, rather than Chelsea FC Holdings, further muddying the waters on ever precedent has been set. So, are Man United hinging on these costs being allowed, or are they already over the line? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and make sure you check out our deep dive into Man United's finances for the last decade. Until then, keep up to date at Numbers Behind the Net for all the latest football finance news.